Hello. This is the writing lesson that nobody asked for, and I'm well aware of that. If it sucks, I'm sorry. We're doing our best. A little bit about me. I'm a writer. I write novels, mostly. Um, I've done a bit of script writing and some short stories here and there, but I'm predominantly novels. I self-published a couple novels a couple years back and would like to do more in the future. I would like to be uh, traditionally published sometime in the future. But that's all beside the point. Today we're doing the writing lesson that nobody wanted, which is basically talking about flow. I have seen a lot of writing recently um, from a lot of different sources where it to me seems very choppy. And so today I wanted to try and talk about flow in terms of like getting from point A to point B in a chapter and how you can kind of navigate that and instead of making it like a like that, <laughs> making it more like this, <laughs> so it's more enjoyable to read. These are going to be a lot of things that we, if you have been writing for a long time, you probably do it without even thinking about it, which is good. That's a writer's instinct, and we're here for that. Otherwise, if this is new information to you, take it with a grain of salt. I am not the end-all be-all authority on writing, and neither is anybody else on the internet, to be quite honest. So take what you want, take what's helpful, and apply it to your writing and make it your own. So. That's where we're starting off today. I have a whiteboard and we're gonna try and give you some visuals because I work with visuals in my head. So, and then I have a stack of books here of books I have read and we're gonna kind of dissect. This is basically your English teacher's class. So welcome to English class. I'm Miss Kate, nice to meet you. Here's where we're gonna start. I have no script, so if this is awful, I apologize, but whatever. This is your chapter, right? We got point A and point B. A lot of things that I see here recently have been people trying to start with their plot, right? And they're trying to get from point A to point B in their plot. And then they want to add in like a detail or a lot of exposition. And when I read a big fat paragraph of exposition in a chapter, to me, this is what it does and then it gets back to the plot. So this is what we're trying to avoid. When you don't realize that you're changing from one subject to another and kind of coming full circle, that to me is a good flow. And of course that's all based on opinion and I am not the leading authority on this. I'm not even a good authority on this. This is just what I have noticed and what I'm basing my writing off of. You want things in your chapter to connect and be smooth, otherwise it's gonna jolt your reader out of the reading experience. We're gonna start with an example. This is Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake. I love this book. I'm kind of a sucker for any book that has a black cover and dark fantasy themes. Just gonna say that. We're gonna look at just like a little section from page three, like right at the beginning. I'm just gonna read it a little bit and then we'll talk about it. Natalia frowns. You've been resting, she asks. Yes, Natalia, says Catherine. Nothing but water and thinned porridge? Nothing. Nothing to eat but that for days, and it may still not be enough. The poison she will have to consume, the sheer amounts of it, may still overcome Natalia's training. Of course, it would be nothing at all if Catherine's poisoner gift were strong. Standing on the block, the walls of the darkened parlor feel heavy. They press in, given the weight by the sheer number of errands inside. They have come from all across the island for this, the Queen's 16th birthday. That's just a small section. But what I wanted to show you in that is basically the beginning of this chapter is all plot, right? So it's it's just like action upon action happening. And then you kind of delve off into like a slight little detail dump or like a slight little backstory, just like a few lines of backstory. And to me, that's good flow because it's not paragraph on paragraph on paragraph of exposition. And exposition can be very startling and frankly, quite boring. So basically, she asks Catherine questions that are going to be important to the plot, right? And she does a little bit of a backstory here where she basically just does a line or two and she mentions she's going to have to consume poison, which is another important plot detail, right? So then you get down to this next paragraph and it mentions the Queen's 16th birthday. Now this has nothing to do with the plot that's like happening right now. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the action that's happening in the book right now. It basically goes through all this action, this dialogue, and then it takes a little bit of a dip and it says all the people in this room have come from across the land to celebrate the Queen's 16th birthday. In my brain, that's really good because 
you've got plot, action, 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 plot, and then you've got, oh, plot detail. And then you've got plot. Beautiful. This is gonna get you from point A to point B in a much smoother fashion than this, right? If she were to talk about plot and dialogue and all these things, and then talk about something completely unrelated for a very long time, <laughs> that would be very startling and honestly really confusing. Even just like talking about chapter structure. She didn't open the chapter with like just this dump of all these details and exposition and backstory and telling you how the world works. Basically what Kendara Blake did here is give you dialogue and action and things to start make you start questioning and then she took a little bit of a dip with just one or two details that made you think oh well I had these questions and now I've answered a couple of them. That's just one example. I love that book. Go read it if you haven't read it. Another thing that I want to talk about is getting back on track after you've done one of those dips. In terms of a chapter, the way I think about it is you've got your main plot, right? You've got your main dialogue, your plot, the action that is moving the chapter forward. It's what the people are doing. It's what they're saying. It's um, what they're trying to accomplish in a chapter. The further you get into it, you're going to want to put in little nuggets of backstory or detail or you know things that are gonna round out your characters and round out your plot it's gonna make it a lot more realistic to your readers let's look at good old harry potter this is from chapter two and this is 10 years after um harry is left on his cousin's doorstep harry has come downstairs to make his family breakfast, make his aunt and uncle and his cousin breakfast. It's Dudley's birthday. There's a little bit of dialogue where basically his aunt's talking to him through the door of the broom cupboard. And then it dips into this little bit where it's narration, but it's Harry's inner thoughts. And it says, Dudley's birthday. How could he have forgotten? Harry slowly got out of his bed and started looking for socks. He found a pair under his bed. And after pulling a spider off of one of them, he put them on. Harry was used to spiders because the cupboard under the stairs was full of them. And that's where he slept. That's a really great paragraph because... You've got dialogue immediately before. It's two lines of dialogue right before. All this action right beforehand. This is literally on the second page of the second chapter, right? You've got dialogue and action and then a detail. Dudley's birthday, how could he have forgotten? And then more action. And then another detail that says Harry was used to spiders because the cupboard under the stairs was full of them and that's where he slept. And that's another important plot detail that... J.K. Rowling included that does not jolt you out of the story. Instead of saying from the very beginning of the chapter that Harry Potter slept in a cupboard under the stairs, it's a lot more interesting to have Petunia banging on the door and talking to him and have the reader wondering where is he that's so dark and small and to talk about you know the things that live where he sleeps like spiders and bugs and things like that and the dust falling from the ceiling when Dudley comes down the stairs and hearing the footsteps all of that is much more interesting when you spread it out through your chapter and don't just put it all right at the beginning so that's another great example let's have an example here right let's say that your chapter is about a character who is on a journey across an ocean right and he's looking out over the water and it's hot and humid and sticky and he's hungry and thirsty and you also know that in this chapter you want to put in a flashback to give the reader insight into where he's come from and where he's going and to round him out as a person. We as humans make connections to things. We'll see something and make a connection to a memory we have or or something else that we know. You don't want your characters to be flat. So the best thing that you can do with that is to give them a bit of a backstory, give them a personality, give them an attitude, have them um, really delve into the reactions they have to different things that happen in the environment. We all react in different ways. You know, if I stub my toe, I might cry, whereas somebody else might stub their toe and curse. If you really want to make your characters believable and really make them tangible people, that's the best thing that you can do to give them individualities. I got it interrupted, so we're going to finish this real quick. In this chapter that you're writing, you want to include a flashback because you want your character to be really well-rounded and believable. If you jump straight from a paragraph about his journey and, like, all of this stuff that's going on in like the present now action plot whatever if you jump straight to like a random paragraph about his family it's gonna be really um it's gonna be really confusing for your reader if you slow it down and you make connections from the environment to what's happening in his past 
then it becomes more believable because we as humans tend to notice things in our environment and connect them to things that we've seen before. Have him notice the glint of the sun on the water and have him connect it to the glint off of the cross that his mother wore when he was a kid. This provides you like an alleyway for you to transition into flashback without jumping straight to it. Now, of course, there are exceptions to every rule and I have no hard and fast rules for writing. I think every rule is meant to be broken. I don't even know if you can call these a rule because I have no authority to say what you can and can't do. That's just something to consider. If you're trying to introduce bits of backstory but you don't want to put in just a block of exposition, then give yourself little alleyways and little opportunities to make connections. This is going to make your reader remember all of the things that your character is remembering. Later on in the book they'll notice a detail and say, oh yeah, I do remember that because the character remembered this thing because of this. Far-fetched, but if you've done it before or you have been writing for a long time, it makes sense to you. So these are some random thoughts, writing lesson that you didn't ask for about flow and plot and chapter structure. Basically to sum it all up, you've got the flow, right? You don't want a jagged edge of a flow when you are in a chapter and trying to insert detail or backstory. You want to try and make it smooth so that the character is not just like pulled out of the story or bored with details that don't really connect. So try and connect everything, try and give it a nice good reading experience unless you're trying to do it on purpose. Which, you know, sometimes you do things accidentally and just say that you did them on purpose because it works. So everything with a grain of salt. Um, write the way you want to write, but these are just some things to think about. And that's it for our uh, writing lesson that nobody asked for.